my big honor now um, to uh, give some attention to a situation in the world which is uh, close to all of us, um, I think, um, uh, the Ukraine situation. But um, it's almost like a coincidence now that you are uh, coming from uh, Ukraine and that you're here on stage because um, uh, Lenny is uh, really um, very active in the European uh, Drupal is that an association? Uh, it's an advisory board, rather. Advisory board, yeah, okay. Yeah, for Drupal Europe. And, and, and maybe it's a strange question, but what does an advisory board advise? Well, we advise uh, in particular on the, uh, on the program of the conference, so the sessions uh, and uh, the, the, the process of the organization of the conference in general. So, uh, and as well, we are helping sometimes on the site, so, well. If you will be in Prague, and I hope everyone will be there, <laughs> make sure to stop by and say hi. <laughs> All right, well, a big hand of applause, everyone. Thank you very much, Ling. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for joining me today. And, uh, well, the start of our session will be a little bit unusual, as unusual is the, the topic we, we are about to discuss, right? So. Czujesz bratę mi, towarzyszu mi, pili dajuć sirym sznurom, żurawli uwyri, pliczuć kru, 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 czurzyni. Zaki mora perleczu, krylońka sitru, krylońka sitru. So, why sad songs, Lenny, you might think? Well, actually, this is the song that I learned from my grandpa, my late grandpa, and uh, I was, I think, five years old at the time. This is the song about the birds that are living their land, they are living their nests, and they do not know if they will be back. Every now and again, this, pop, this song would pop up in my head over the last months because I feel like most Many, at least, of my compatriots that currently are all across the world, they are very much like those birds. They had to leave and they are not sure if their nests will be safe and when they will be safe and if they will be able to come back. So, and in general, if you think about it, for us, for Ukrainians, it became the time when we, we think about the past, we think about the, the history about old man tales that we heard as children, and we re evaluating we are rediscovering those things and redefining them. Um, so one of those things is uh, bravery. Essentially, what bravery is, I think that's, that's something that's the word that, that became a little bit different than, let's say, start of the February to each of the Ukrainians. Of course, if you think about bravery, if you think about the defenders of Ukraine, how their kindness to the people, to the animals, that the saved cats and dogs, basically. But also, if you think of the bravery on a daily basis, other things pop up in your head. If, of course, it's volunteering, because most of my friends, myself included, we, we are trying to help in every way we can. And uh, we are getting great support for our friends across the world as well. But also, ultimate bravery would be when you're waking up and reading news in the morning. It takes heart, you know, um, or when you're fighting anxiety on a daily basis because a lot of people that had to leave their homes, obviously they are not in the best place and we are also trying to, to help out with that as 
well, we all know, especially after COVID times, that mental health is the problem that we were not dedicating enough time probably in the, in the old days. Or ultimately bravery is perhaps making commits in the middle of alarms when for every now and again you, are, you have to run to the shelter because there is, there is chance that the bombs, the missiles will, will fall on your city, on your town. So speaking of the commits, there is the next slide that I stole from Dries. <laughs> so if you've if you seen Dries notes from Portland, probably you've seen this one. So as you can see, Ukraine is, uh, I would like to remind each and every of us the, the relevance of Ukrainian Drupal community to Drupal ecosystem as a whole. So we are on the sixth place and per capita, I think it would be even more than that, probably like in the top three leaders or something like that. But at least at the very least, Ukraine on the sec sixth uh, place from all the countries in terms of the contributions. And uh, the guys, like my team that I work with uh, as uh, part of the Open Social, uh, you know, when you're having daily stand-up and they, then they hear alarm and you have to interrupt and then go back to, to the business as usual, that's something, that's this new reality that we, we had to face and we, we are still facing. So, yeah, so these commits, they are not only the codes that you see, it's also the courage of hearts behind those, those strings of code. And there is also, like, there's a lot of things that, that we learned during this time. So, I personally, I learned that I knew nothing about stress resistance before 21st of February. <laughs> now I know a lot, whole thing more about that. And, um, but in general, what, what, what are the, the biggest lessons we learned? It's like probably adjustment will be the first, because as I told you already, like business as usual is not as it's supposed to be a couple of months ago. We learned to adapt and to change and quickly to the new world that's opened be like right up front of us. We, we are starting to do the things that we, we never did before. So I know that Dev Branch, one of the biggest companies, like the, the, one, of, one, one of the, who we call heart of the Ukrainian Drupal community, so they are doing their best to provide the supplies to the defenders of Ukraine. Uh, Andriy Podanenko, who you might know uh, from the Ukrainian Drupal community. So he is currently, um, evolved his uh, project on the smart home to include the shelter in that, in that smart home project. Me personally, I like dedicate my time most of the time to, the, to helping uh, the, the families that are fleeing Ukraine and uh, to help the, the orphans that had to be moved from Ukraine or at least relocated within, within the country and to uh, provide them art supplies for the, for the art therapy. So we all do our share and that's, that's the enhancement part and adjustment part. Then after that, as like after a couple of first weeks of the war, we all were exhausted because you don't sleep, you barely eat, but you are trying to do your best and help as much as possible. So then we learned to recharge because, well, our resources sadly are still limited, we all are human beings. And uh, the, I can tell you that war, that's, that's quite tiresome business, indeed. And uh, giving yourself a break, sometimes not checking the views, uh, sometimes just putting your phone aside for a day, that's a step that's hard to do because you feel guilty, but you have to do if you want to be useful for your own. So, next point is, yeah, media, media hygiene, indeed. So, we faced enormous propaganda machine on the first days, and the filtration of the information became the must-have to each and every person inside Ukraine or outside of Ukraine, because a lot of this information was being shared, and we, we have to stick to the official uh, sources of the information, which is 
kind of sounds like, like a usual business, but when you are droning in that disinformation, it became essential need uh, for survival and survival skill. So fact set of checking, of course, and dosage of the information, because like instantly scrolling your, your like the, all the channels, all the, new, all the news channels, you with time you're starting to limit to one or two channels because, well, otherwise you just keep reflecting on the same information and it doesn't do good to you as well. And last but not the least, what we learned to always approach people with kindness. Because sometimes you want to just cry out loud into the open window. Sometimes you are so exhausted that you you hardly can find right words to speak to someone. But still, if you need to take pills, but always approach people with kindness because it very well might be that they just don't know because they don't have such an interesting uh, neighbor of their own and they cannot imagine a lot of things that we could not imagine, neither of us, were happening over these last couple of months. So always be polite, always be kind, and always step by step like just provide the information, provide your opinion, and uh, give the, the person a chance to, uh, to make own conclusions. Um, and last but not the least, I think that is the ways to help. How, how we can, how the community, Ukrainian Drupal community can be helped. Uh, first of all, it's stay with your partners. Uh, I know that it's risky and that's a huge risk factor having the, the war in the country and still keeping up with, uh, with all, the, all the madness that's going on over there, but there is still comparatively safe territories. And I know for a fact that a lot of people, they are doing their best to stay in the business and uh, it helps them to put their minds at ease. Because when you are spending so much time, like instead of scrolling news that I was just <laughs> describing to you, you at least can, uh, can uh, concentrate on your work and uh, that way remain saner of a person. Um, then, of course, you can volunteer. That's another matter, uh, because I know that in Netherlands in particular there is a lot of refugees and uh, a lot of these people, they, they never traveled. They had no idea where they are going. They have no idea what their life in Europe is. And they are at the conflict with themselves. They are distressed. So if you can dedicate some time, and I know that there is a lot of uh, um, organizations that provide the, the communication clubs, etc. So if you or your friends or your close ones can dedicate a couple of hours or an hour, go there, talk to them, try to, try to explain the, some local, local customs. Uh, tell them about something that is not related to war, I don't know, like festival that's come, coming down to the town or something like that. And um, make them remember for a second at least that there is still normal life and it's not as scary as it might seem at the moment. And of course, if you want to donate, there is always like many ways you can donate. And um, indeed, like if you have questions about that, feel free to catch me after this session or like chat me in LinkedIn in, in any social media and ask and I will be happy to provide information about the, the, um, the, the credible organizations because we also did realize over the time that, uh, that we were uh, working uh, in Ukraine that local volunteering organizations then they apparently make way more difference comparing to even Red Cross or UNICEF as well these big companies, they have funds, but they do not have enough resource based in, uh, in Ukraine, as Ukraine is not part of the uh, European Union, etc. So, yeah, if you don't know, feel free to ask any of your friends, uh, myself included, uh, and we will be happy to provide you all the, all the necessary details. And just to keep it nice, quick and short, the last slide, with many faces, Many lovely smiley faces that you can see. And uh, we are all different. We come in all shapes and colors, uh, but 
today we are united as, as ever. We are part of one single entity that is called Ukraine. Thank you, everyone. Wow. Thank you very much, Eleni. That's really a, uh, a beautiful talk, and uh, yeah, it's really so close to uh, to my heart, at least. And um, what I uh, sense, what I feel, is that it's really close to uh, to many people. So uh, I really want to thank you so much for. Uh, uh, telling us about bravery and I can really understand that the difference between bravery before February and, and, and nowadays is, a, is quite a different um, uh, meaning to the word. So um, again, thank you, thank you very much. It's my absolute ple pleasure and privilege to be here and uh, also I'm really honored to be talking on behalf of uh, Ukrainian Drupal community. Yeah, and also a beautiful singer as well. Uh, <laughs> have we had a, uh, a singer on stage? Yeah, norm Drupal normally I save it for, for the after party, but well. Uh, for the after extreme party. Extreme times, extreme, extreme measures, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, does anyone in the audience have a question for Lenny? Yes. Yeah. How do you go about that with uh, two big global com companies that are um, trying to connect people, but also drive them apart? Talk about Facebook, uh, etc. Yeah, honestly, I limited myself, so I'm currently, I'm not checking any news on the Facebook, uh, even like BBC Ukraine or something like that, so I limited myself to the uh, Telegram channel with uh, Ukrainian news that I know that they are doing uh, proper fact-checking, fact and also I'm signed for the news from the, um, the basically, the, the, the Minister of Foreign uh, uh, Affairs and uh, the Home Office, and uh, I'm checking the, the information that they provide. Because if they, like, if someone has the overview on what's going on, that, that will be them. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions? Time for one more question. Yes. So you're also the lead, of, uh, lead organizer of Kiev? Yes, I am. Can you, <laughs> Can you repeat the question? <laughs> yeah, so uh, there is a question about uh, uh, the Drupal Camp Kiev. Of course, we are planning next event. We don't know when, <laughs> but I can promise you it will be it will be perfect <laughs> because it will be held in uh, renewed Kiev and uh, we will put our heart and soul as we always do and we'll welcome you with open arms and open hearts. Wow, thank you so much. One more great applause for uh, Lenny. Thank you everyone. Thank you.